Walter Parrott has been lucky enough to draw a Pike County, Illinois firearm permit for the opening weekend. And he's chosen to hunt with a muzzle loader to get some extra distance. After a couple of days of hunting with no luck, well-laid plans for still hunting change to a more aggressive tactic, man-made deer drives. This might well be one of the best ways to hunt whitetail if you strategically plan your drives. The first drive here at Carter's Hunting Lodge brings some immediate action. Walter is blocking the head of three big draws. The drivers take advantage of the wind entering the draws on the upwind side, pushing the whitetails from their midday bedding areas. On well-executed drives, deer will slip away from the drivers and funnel down runways and trails past the stands. Okay, guys, what do you think the important parts of this, the key points in this drive, what's it, what's it going to be here? Well, there's two key things, in my opinion, on this. One is that you got to have the wind behind the drivers. Because right. we've had some experience in the past where the deer come out, but they smell the standard. If the wind's wrong, they'll go back through the drivers every time. But that way, they just funnel right on out. Another thing which we, we've experienced already today, it's, it's better to get in the edge of the timber and get stationed up where you can see real good in the draws and stuff because then you get your, your standing shot instead of one of those wide open shots coming out across exactly, here. Exactly, because they're going to be going when they come right, out in the open. Right, if you get back out in the open, when they bust out of there, they're out of there. Yeah, we, we like to get them, you know, a lot of times we used to before we'd drive, we'd kind of make a lot of noise, but it, it, the more we've done it, the, we slip through there deer get up and then like he says they're not near as wild and running. You're letting your scent, you're letting your scent, scent do the, driver's the drive. Scent drive through there and it, it's important to know exactly where the deer gonna come out to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to have done the drive before you know know where that they normally come out and then you get on that spot as what happened to us earlier you know you get right where the deer come and then you're gonna get, increase your chances you know. So let's go to another one of those spots then right, right where that's where we're gonna go man. <laughs> okay. okay which one are we gonna do first man? We'll go over here to the four corners and try that because the wind's right for blowing out of the south right up to all our That's perfect. deer should smell wind the drivers and should push them right to the guys blocking so I think we'll have some action. We won't have that problem we did the other day the yeah. last year with Lonnie when the deer smelled, smelled him. him. Yeah we'll turn, we'll turn it around this year and make it happen. I think we'll get a good one. Gonna get off in this corner right here. This deer gonna come right up this ridge right here. It's supposed to. We'll start to drive at uh, 10:46, so we got about five minutes before they start through there. Cleaning the leaves away lets Walter move with little or no noise. Plus, he prefers to stand behind a tree to help break his outline and to get a rifle rest if needed. Here comes a deer. Right there. Oh, 
steer's gonna slip right back through the drivers. There she goes, right back through the drivers. This looks like a mature whitetail. He's well ahead of the drivers slipping through his cover. It's going to be a long shot, but thanks to lots of practice, Walter has confidence in his night rifle. Man. Yeah, man. Yeah? Yeah, I did. Well, all right, dude. Excellent. <laughs> Want to take a look? Oh, uh, yeah. Where's he's he right at? He's right over on top of the ridge. Wait, you see his back right there. He come right up around the ridge like you said he would. Good. Just like it's supposed to happen, man. It finally Sometimes did. the plan comes together, it doesn't it? it? <laughs> Good. Well, boys. That's what deer drives do in bad weather. It, you know what this weather gets like that? It gets windy. Yeah. That might be the most successful way to harvest deer. Well, it is because they don't move in that wind. They'll at just all. stay they wherever just... they're at. They just stay, you know. They don't get out and get around much. They don't like that wind. Folks, we're here in Pike County, Illinois, with Carter Hunting Lodge, Dale Carter here. And Walter, they got a wall full of big bucks that they killed on drive. This is a good buck. They got three walls of big bucks. Three balls. <laughs> three walls. <laughs> That's a good buck, but that isn't what's on the wall we've been dreaming Not about. Not even is close, it? no. I tell you what, but though, he will do. a hundred and something yards through the woods and the sun shining on those horns and your heart beating and... It's, it's giddy, man. The hunt. It's crazy he sees he was a big, the big last, animal, right? Hey, the last... Has, that's, I'm telling you, this chest, I don't know what he's going to weigh, but he is thick through the chest there. He is big. Deer calling is very effective, but what is wrong with this picture? Expert caller Walter Parrott will offer his insight. You know, the obvious problem with this setup is the hunter's too open. One thing you need to think about when you're calling any game, when you start calling, you're the hunted. If I had to hunt a particular setup like this, I would use a decoy with some scent on it. Also, you need to use your range finder. It's very important to know your distances because that deer's probably going to circle you before he comes in. Also use your wind floaters. You need to know the wind direction. Ideally, I would rather hunt in a thicker area where the deer actually has to hunt for me more and I'm not as apt to be picked up in a tree stand. I think if you'll follow these few tips, you'll be a more successful hunter. Bill Bynum has settled into his tree stand that overlooks an old home place, a special hunting spot that brings back some great memories of days gone by. Grown-up cutover areas like this, where the sunlight can reach the forest floor, have an overabundance of good browse, a main ingredient in a whitetail's diet. If you find a thick cover and a good food source, usually the does will be there. He's after the doe. He's after the doe. We're just going to have to wait. Maybe he'll give us a shot here in a minute. He's chasing that doe in there. A heavy antlered white tailed buck is hot on the trail of a doe, but Bill can't get a shot that he feels comfortable taking. When you have a hot doe in an area, bucks will do their best to stay close. So if a hunter is patient, a good shot might present itself. Don't move. He's looking right at us. Burn 
Johnny to take this shot. Don't move. Don't move. He's looking right at us. Can't get a shot. Night and Hale's Easy Twist Pro Grunter has this buck thinking another buck is working this area. And with the rut and swing, he can't help but come investigate. Whatever you ready. There he is, there he is. He's following dope. He's following dope. Can you get on him? He's gonna be coming right out by that chimney. He's coming out right by that chimney. Get ready. Just heard him crash, man. We got him. That's that big six pointer I was telling you about. That's why. David, I heard him crash just the other side of this old chimney. If he's there, I've got my old home place, Buck. I think a lot of people don't realize is when a buck has a doe in estrus and he's tending there, Yo. there's going to be little bucks around perimeter all around it well, if they're there. We seen, you know, several small bucks this morning come through and uh, heard him grunt this morning before daylight. Listen, he, I, when, the first thing I heard out of him was when I knew there was a, a dominant buck. He was doing that. <laughs> yep. Boy, when you hear that right there, you know that's a dominant buck. Now, he may be just this size right here, but he was dominant. And I think... Uh, the thing that probably excited me a little bit too was you got his attention when you couldn't see him by blowing right. that deer, uh, a grunt call. Grunt call. And he eyeballed us. Boy, he looked at us two every time. I said, oh, my lands, we might have goofed up here. But he was looking out there to see what that was. Exactly. And I guess the idea is what, you, what I would have done too was trying to get him moved where you could shoot. Because when I could see him, you couldn't. And when right. you could see him, I couldn't. Well, you know, it was one time there, you, would, you said, there he is, take him whenever you get ready. And I have one limb in the way. And he went back, and I said, oh, my lands, that deer ain't going to come back out again. But you know what? Don't get excited, because when That's there's a doe in heat, and they don't know you're there, they'll dart this way, that away, and this joker finally came out there. What? You have located an area where several trails lead to a food source, but which trail do you hunt? David Hale and Walter Parrott will offer some good advice on this one. Walter, you know that's a pretty doggone good question. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. Anytime you've got seven, eight, ten trails going into a food source and they don't cross, which one of them are you going to choose? I'll give you the first shot at that. Which one <laughs> would you choose? I think I would try to narrow it down to where I could get as many pads under me as I possibly could and cover to shoot to. No words, you're thinking there's going to be two or three of them close enough that you can shoot I'm hoping there's them. maybe four. <laughs> Gee whiz. Also, I'm going to have a climbing stand in the truck in case I need to move, you know, from the morning to the evening hunt if I see something that, and obviously the wind's going to play a factor in that at all times. Well, you know, I think you're hitting right on something that we all need to be concerned about is you don't need to be a one-stand person. A man needs to go in 
and put up four or five different stands. And I don't say put up one on every trail, but the reason those trails are all there is because there's something making those deer move down that exactly. trail, going to that food source, whether it's the wind, whether it's coming out and going to the food uh, food source, or whether it's going to the bedding area. There's a reason for all of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the things you've got to put in uh, into consideration of which one of those stands you pick out. Me personally, I'm going to get off to the heaviest trail about 50, 75 yards and find that little bitty dim trail that's over there because I know that's where those bucks travel most of the time. And you talking about tough to do. It's tough to <laughs> hang and stand there looking at the smoke coming off that that's and over right. But, you know, that, that's, a, that's a tough scenario, but the more stands you can hang, and when that wind changes, and, of course, keeping that portable stand handy, climbing stand, that's great. But sometimes uh, uh, I like to find those bottlenecks, and especially when you're into calling or you're into something where you need to be halfway concealed, and you're announcing your presence that's there, you need to hide yourself around some kind of an obstacle and you're funneling those deer down. So I would look mm -hmm. for one of those trails and you may have to go in in the summertime to find this. And I'd find me a place that narrowed down and right where it narrowed down at the shortest distance, I know they gotta walk by there, I'm gonna be pretty close to right along there. And that'd be a great time to hang your stand in the summer. Absolutely would, but you know what the problem I have with that is? Every single time I hang one in the summer, I forget at my age where I put it. If you take me with you, I'll remind you where it's at. Not a chance, I think I'll just keep <laughs> notes. Folks, I promise you, this is a tough question, but it's some good answers right here. Put up as many stands as you can. Play the wind. It doesn't necessarily have to be the hottest trail there, but stick with it because one of those trails is going to be productive. Here are some of the fine outfitters the Night and Hail team recommends for quality whitetail hunts. Now let's look at some of the fine companies whose products and support helped make this video possible. Harold, here's you an onion to cook. <laughs> I tell you what, if I put something on y'all's plate tonight, y'all gonna eat it. <laughs> hey guys, we gotta finish up this planning session now. Let's everybody have a vote on where you think you wanna go for this coming year. We get two choices, right? Well, have to. Go ahead. Okay. Obviously, I wanna go where they're laying heavy, so I wanna go to Nebraska early. All right. And then if it starts cooling off, I wanna go south and we'll go to Alabama. Okay, Alabama, Nebraska. Now, he killed a big deer in Illinois last year. What's wrong with him? He don't use his head sometimes, does he? <laughs> Don't like go the same place twice. Oh, okay. What do you want to do? I, uh, we're going to Montana elk hunting, and you have a deer option there on your tag also. So I'm voting for that, and I'm voting for Nebraska also. Both well, those places are great. I'm a, I want to go to Montana because of the elk hunt and the whitetail hunt, and that is in September when the weather's not real cold. That's right. And if I could get drawn, I would love to go to Iowa if I could get drawn. Well, my lands, okay, we've got Iowa, Nebraska, 
Uh, Montana, you can forget the combination hunt. Alabama. Georgia. Walker Wait, 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 wait. wait till we're talking the cold weather states here, oh, okay. and I've got to go along for all this, and y'all know how I hate the cold, but I'm really, really excited about my polar wrap this year, so I might be able to stay in the stand with you guys. I am not a cold weather lover, and y'all know that, and why did y'all choose all these states? I guess it's because they got the bigger deer. You know what's nice about Nebraska and Montana, like Harold mentioned, you can hunt out there in September. Middle of September, bow season comes in, and those deer are very patternable around those food sources here, and, and some good deer. September, they're very patternable right here too. When I kill my elk the first day, I'm on bull hunt for whitetail the next day. <laughs> Mr. Optimism right here. <laughs> By the way, you said something about cold weather, polar wrap. Did you get me and Walter one? I noticed you and Harold looked awful toasty last year oh, in that goose pit. I can tell you the reason old Harold got one. When I saw old Mr. Cold Nature Hale out here almost sweating in that cold weather, I said, something got to be good about that thing. He wouldn't be wearing it, so I went and got me one. I He's like ready, it. ain't he? I'll tell you one. It's not very often that a great product comes around. A lot of good products, but very often a great product. That's one that's going to keep me in the stand longer. And I can tell you what, if I can stay there longer, something's got to happen. You're right. Folks, I appreciate and we appreciate your support in the past. I guarantee you we're going to be back next year. Hope to see you then in a brand new video. Where yes. are you going to be hunting next year? Right here, bud. I'd like right to have here. three choices if I could. I want to go to Montana. Well, you can go there. <laughs>